Hi, my name is Benny Cruceru, and welcome to the Bible Exegete, the place where we dive and delve deep into the Word of God. And I want to do this together. Today I would like to talk about something that is not clearly presented in the New Testament. That is Paul's unknown missionary trip. Some call it fifth, some call it fourth missionary trip. Some call it 15th or 20th, depending on how they count each and small trip that Paul did. Well, that's not my point. What we know it is that this trip is unknown. It is not clearly presented in the New Testament. What we do know is that in Acts chapter 28, Paul is in Rome under house arrest for a couple of years, and then he is released. Once he is released, we do not have Luke telling us anymore what Paul did, although most likely Luke was with Paul everywhere even after Acts 28. So looking at these hints, we can see that Paul went to places and visited places uh, that aren't presented in the narratives of the book of Acts. We know according to Titus chapter 1 verse 5 that he was in Crete planting churches. It says there, I left you in Crete. That means Paul was there in Crete. Yes, Paul was in Crete according to the book of Acts for a short while, but he was a prisoner. He couldn't have been there planting churches, and he definitely wasn't with Titus. Also, looking at different verses in the pastoral epistles, these point to visits not presented in the book of Acts. Therefore, we have an unknown missionary trip presented in the New Testament. It is hinted at, especially in the pastoral epistles. Paul was released from the house arrest in Rome, according to Acts 28, somewhere around the year 61 or 62 AD. If we were to recreate a map of his trip, it looked something like this. We do not know all the details. There might have been some back and forth from uh, Greece and Macedonia to Asia Minor. That is not clear, but it looked something like this. I don't think Paul made it to Spain as we don't have proof of that from the epistles. Yes, I am aware of some church fathers hinting at that. We only have his desire stated in Romans 15. Also, Spain would have been a major endeavor that would take a lot of time and that wouldn't leave enough time for the places we do know Paul visited. He leaves Rome and plants the church in Crete together with Titus, according to Titus chapter 1, verse 5, as I said previously. After some time, Titus stays there to pastor the church of Crete, and Paul goes to Asia Minor in Miletus, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. He then goes to Ephesus, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 and asks Timothy to remain there and pastor the church in Ephesus. You will see some of the photos uh, that are from Ephesus. There are personal photos from my trip to Ephesus. And I hope you enjoy these, and also some photos from Pergam. We don't think Paul made it there, but I found them interesting, so I had them in the presentation, so you can see a little of Pergam as well. Ephesus was probably the biggest church in the world at that time. Who knows if the church in Rome was bigger or not, but given the persecution, probably the church in Rome shrinked. Paul goes on a tour to the Grecian churches, but hopes to return back to Ephesus. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. He passes through Troas, 2 Timothy 4.13, as he goes to Macedonia and Achaia. Writing 1 Timothy probably from the former, 1 Timothy 3.14, in 63 or early 64 AD. In the summer or early fall of 64, he writes to Titus from Corinth, 2 Timothy 4.20, and asks him to come from Crete to Nicopolis, a port city on the west coast of Greece, about 300 kilometers away from Corinth, the city he wrote Titus from. He further sends Titus into new territory, Dalmatia, 2 Timothy 4.10, 
while replacing him in Crete with Artemis. Titus 3.12, 2 Timothy 4.12 It is possible that Paul intended to go to Dalmatia with Titus since he spends the winter in Nicopolis, but he is captured before leaving. In spite of this, Titus goes to Dalmatia in order to break fresh ground there. The ones taking the epistles of Titus to Crete were most likely Apollos and Zenos. Apollos probably served long term in Corinth as the church was really attached to him and so was he. Acts 18, 19, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 3 and chapter 16 as well. It is possible, given the direction, that Apollos and Zenos are heading to North Africa. If so, probably to Alexandria, Apollos' city of birth, according to Acts 18. But this is only a speculation. Paul's missionary vision seems to be in expansion mode as the churches are starting to grow. There are more and more converts and the gospel is spreading more and more towards the edges of the empire. All things seem peaceful peaceful in the epistle to Titus, and there is no proof of persecution. But, soon after writing to Titus, the persecution starts as Rome was burned down in July 64. The people start gossiping that it was Nero that set the eternal city on fire. According to the annals of Tacitus, the emperor blames it on the Christians in order to have a scapegoat. I don't think that Nero set Rome on fire. It is irrelevant whether it was him or not. The reality was that he was losing the people's support and they were blaming him. What we can observe about the persecution is that it aimed at the leaders of the church first and foremost. It doesn't mean that the rest of the church wasn't persecuted, but the leaders seemed to be the first target. Paul and Peter are captured and brought to Rome, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 22, 1 Peter 5, 13. The fact that they are brought to Rome indicates that Nero was trying to achieve something in the heart of the public. Paul is imprisoned somewhere between late 64 and 66 AD. I probably would go with the year 65, but it's not certain. Peter was probably imprisoned a little later after Paul. Their imprisonment overlapped according to the church fathers. Paul writes 2 Timothy in the late summer or fall, either 65 or 66. We know this because he asked for his cloak, 2 Timothy 4.13, and asks Timothy to arrive before the winter, 2 Timothy 4.21. Knowing that his death is imminent, he asked Timothy to come to Rome as fast as possible, together with John Mark. We don't know if Timothy and Mark made it to Rome before Paul died, but they did make it to Rome. Timothy, while in Rome, ends up being imprisoned in Italy, according to Hebrews 13.23, most certainly in Rome. And Mark is mentioned together with Silas in 1 Peter 5.13. The most important leaders of the church are in Rome and epistles are being sent and back and forth knowing that it is their last days. 1 Peter is written from Rome to the churches in Asia Minor and 2 Peter to the same audience right before Peter is crucified and possibly after Paul was beheaded. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. As Peter is aiming at leaving the church theological material posthumously, 2 Peter chapter 1 15 states this clearly. And strengthening the authority of the Pauline corpus, as I said previously, 2 Peter chapter 3 15 16. This is how Paul's last missionary trip looks like. Yes, some of uh, the information we have is not clear, there might be some speculation here and there. But it looks something like this, like the map you see before you. And I believe that this helps us to have a clear image of how things looked in the 60s. How the epistle, the pastoral epistles fit together in the Christian context in Paul's life. And also, I believe that other epistles I mentioned, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, fit well in this context as well. And the last of them all, I believe to be the book of Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews. 
And because of this, in our next video, I would like to talk about the epistle to the Hebrews. Now, I might exaggerate it a little bit, but quoting a former president of the United States, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be huge. We're going to talk also about the author of Hebrews, and it's going to be exciting. Now, that's not my purpose, and it's not my goal. Uh, we cannot have a def definitive name for him, but... I think we have good clues that hint at the author of Hebrews, especially when we compare it to 1 Peter. Yes, you've heard me right. We're going to compare it to 1 Peter. And we might have some good clues that tell us who is the author of Hebrews. We'll also talk about the context of the book of Hebrews and what happened and who it was sent to. And there we also have clues in the book of Hebrews that tell us whom the epistle was sent to. So stay tuned and please subscribe if you want to follow my videos. I hope they are useful for you. Glad to have you on the Bible Exegete and I hope you enjoy this material.